Consumer confidence sliding to a four-month low. That drop reflects growing anxiety over inflation and rising interest rates. With the busiest shopping season just around the corner, we want to bring in Hubert Jolie. He is the former chairman and CEO of Best Buy. He's also a senior lecturer at Harvard Business School. And Hubert, thank you uh, well, Becky, for being here. Look forward morning. to our conversation. Why don't, why don't we talk first just about um, how the consumer is feeling? Because we have seen some signs this week that consumer confidence is dropping. How big of an issue is that? There, there's uh, that's another factor of uncertainty for retailers and, and companies more globally. I think the uh, payback of the student debt is going to be a big factor that uh, people are going to look at. So, I mean, in general, this is a relatively benign environment, but it's uh, the, the volatility and the uncertainty. Plus, you know, is the government going to shut down? That's another factor. So uh, you have to look at this with uh, quite a bit of uh, resilience as you move towards the holiday season. We've also looked at credit card uh, defaults on the yeah. rise, the highest level we've seen since yeah. uh, the financial, the great financial yeah. crisis. Yeah. And that means that for, for CEOs and leaders, uh, agility is becoming such an important factor, right? You be, given the number of curveballs that are being thrown at you on, a, on an ongoing basis, you know, you need to have this agility to navigate these uh, treacherous waters. What, what does that mean? You need to be able to move your workforce, be able to change what you're, what you're getting in stock and how quickly? Yeah, agility on the supply chain front. So people, uh, you know, in the apparel industry, they've shortened the lead time so that they can replenish more quickly and, and uh, in a more flexible fashion. That'd be an example of that. Um, what we've heard from, from Target yesterday um, was that they're actually closing nine stores and they picked them, targeted stores, and targeted target stores um, in, in areas where they have seen theft and crime and they have tried to do things like increase the number of security guards, bring in third party security guards, um, tried to make sure they have all kinds of things across the store to yeah. anti-theft devices and it's just not working in those areas. This is something they've been talking about for a couple of years, yeah. but so have other retailers. Yeah, it's been pervasive and the fact that Target, which is a great company, is doing this is a sign that they've tried a lot because they would not do this. Uh, you know, just on a, on a limb. So it's a, another sign that our society is, uh, you know, is, is seeing a lot of tensions, uh, and uh, that's something that companies need to deal with. But what, what, what's to blame here? I mean, is this local law enforcement? Is this district attorneys? Is this changes in rules on who you'll prosecute for shoplifting and why? Is it organized crime rings that are coming in and, and targeting things they want to buy and then being able to fence it pretty quickly online, all of these things? Yeah, the, the, you know, the root cause that may be beyond my pay grade, but uh, when you're dealing with, for a retailer, if you're dealing with organized crime in an environment where your stores have traditionally been quite open and the uh, guideline that retailers give their workforce is, done, you know, this is just stuff. Yeah. So don't, don't get killed. Uh, uh, and so people are taking advantage of this, which is, which is really sad. So fixing this, uh, you know, I'm not sure I know the answer to that question, frankly. But a societal problem. You said it earlier. It, it, it certainly indicates that we have this, um, this wealth inequity on a, on a big scale, that you have a very divided society. People are angry. Uh, and so you see that in a whole variety of ways, including around the culture wars. And uh, uh, this is a divided society, which is really sad. We used to be these great United States of America it feels like we're a bit disunited. Today. Yeah, but a divided society among people who follow the laws and those who don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, Best Buy, uh, consumer electronics. If you talk specifically about some of those areas, uh, furniture, consumer electronics, all the things that people loaded up on during yes. COVID, yeah. um, we've seen a drop in demand for those things because yeah. people don't want to buy a new TV for the third yeah. time. Um, what we've seen that move on to services. What does that mean for retail overall? So I think that, uh, uh, you know, Corey, my successor at Best Buy, had to deal with a roller coaster, right? Uh, in 2020 uh, 20 and 2021, demand completely peaked. We all remember that when we had to buy a third computer, a third video camera and a mic and, and so forth. And at some point, so I think what Corey said on the last earnings call is that she expects this year to be the bottom because, uh, you know, innovation is going to continue to drive interest on the part of uh, right. uh, customers. And so she expects things to uh, uh, to rebound. It's a, you know, it goes up and down and then back up again. We're going to have Lena Khan on in just a little bit yeah. and talk about Amazon. Yeah. Do you look at Amazon and think that they have monopolistic power? So the question of the lawsuit against Amazon is, a, is an interesting one. There is, I think, a great senator from Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar, has written a book about the, you know, the antitrust laws and how somehow they fell behind. The evolution. I think there are some practices from Amazon and some of these online players that are worth looking at. 
Mm -hmm. You know, when you, uh, as an example, let's imagine that, uh, you know, they have a lot of products. One product is not available, and then all of a sudden they lower the price on that. And because everybody follows each other, you know, that's hurting. But, 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 right. but off camera, I spoke to you about Best Buy and the demise was, was greatly exaggerated because I don't order a TV. If they tell me I got to hook up my ruckus Wi Fi right. thing, I mean, I, I need Best I need the Geek Squad and Magnolia yeah. to come over. So yeah. you've but competed I'll, against Amazon effectively. Yeah, and, so and, you, they and, can be competed against. Absolutely. And there's great examples. Best Buy is one of them. There's others that have, uh, you know, emerged as uh, the best version of themselves and combining online and offline. But, I, but that's not a comment on the practices. So I think it's fair right, that the right, government right. will look into. We, we're going to have to run this, this, this. If Amazon had real power, and decided to raise their prices on product, TVs, whatever, athletic gear. Yeah. Do you think that, that, that people would still buy them on Amazon? I think this that, is a That's point. the ultimate question about the power, meaning you only actually have monopolistic power uh, if you can raise prices against your customers. And I don't see how that would actually happen or work. So, so Andrew, I think it's going to be interesting to look at because as consumers, and the government will have to prove this, you know, we are prime members, and so this is our go-to place. How many times do you check the price of a product on Amazon against Walmart, right? Especially on smaller items, I don't, and it's a convenience play. And so they've established, let's say, they've become so indispensable in our lives. How many times per week so that, do we order? that unto itself is a monopoly. Okay. No. Okay. No. I'm not sure I agree no, with that. No, the yeah, government that's will have to look at it. That's your response. Well, check, check. Don't be lazy. Check to see where you can get the cheaper one. It's not Amazon's fault. It depends on the price point. So if yeah, it's okay. a $20 item, maybe you're not going to check. If it's a $2,000 item, then you're not.